welcome to worship at St. Stephen's Lutheran Church in Hickory, North Carolina. We're so glad you can worship on this Monday, Thursday. It's a time when we recall how Jesus and the disciples gathered in the upper room. He washed their feet, and they celebrated the Passover. We begin by confessing our sins and being assured of God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we're captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We've sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we've done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On this Monday, Thursday, we remember how Jesus gathered with the disciples in the upper room, how he washed their feet, and how they celebrated the Passover. Now, people gathered by the thousands and thousands in Jerusalem to remember the Passover, or it was also called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. God had told the people, his chosen people of Israel, to always remember every year the Passover. The Passover was the time in which God delivered his people out of slavery in Egypt and started them on their journey to the promised land. So they remembered the Passover every year. And it was in some ways a huge object lesson because they had certain foods that reminded them of certain things that God had done and their situation in Egypt. So I thought it might be interesting for us to kind of look a bit at the Passover. Now we're not really celebrating the Passover, but we're going to be thinking about the Passover and how Jesus and the disciples might have celebrated and then how Jesus moved from the Passover to adding a cup of wine, a actually a sixth cup of wine, and then said, this is my body, this is my blood, do this to remember me. 
So, this is done oftentimes in the homes of Jewish people, normally not in the synagogue in a large setting. And there's a pretty elaborate service that goes with it, but I'm just going to talk to you a bit about some of the objects and what they mean. They would often begin by having what was called a bitter herb. They would take uh, lettuce or celery or something akin to that, and they would dip it in salt water, and then they would eat the bitter herb. Now, that was to remind them of the bitterness of slavery and how terrible it was to be a slave in Egypt. Then, they would often have a piece of lamb, and they would remember how God had delivered them. The plan was God gave it to them to kill a lamb, eat the lamb, and then place the blood of the lamb that they had slain over the doorpost of their home. And when the death angel came over that night and uh, took the, the uh, firstborn child of animals and people, then their lives of their firstborn would be set free. So it's remembrance of what God did for their children. Then they often have unleavened bread. And they were told the night before they were to leave for the promised land to eat unleavened bread. The idea was they didn't have time for the bread to leaven. It takes a while for it to rise, so it didn't have time for it to rise. So that's unleavened bread. They would often then uh, have a boiled egg that they would eat. The boiled egg represented the cycle of life, and in some circles it represents the hardness of the heart of Pharaoh, a hard-boiled egg. Uh, they would oftentimes eat greenery to remind them that at one time their life actually flourished in Egypt. When Joseph was there and he was second in command, things went very well. So to remind them that the life once flourished in Egypt and life will flourish again with God's help. And then there is an interesting dish called orset. It is a mixture of apples and nuts and wine. It's a very tasty, in fact it's probably the tastiest item on the uh, table. It's uh, kind of an applesauce and it's to remind them of the mortar that was used when they were building things with the bricks that they made. Because as slaves, they had to put together bricks and mortar. Now, that was to help them remember what had taken place. They would always wash their hands. They would always light a candle. And then, during the meal, they would have various cups of wine. And there were actually five cups that they would use during the meal. The first cup uh, would remind them, well, first of all, I should say, uh, the cups of wine reminded them that they were set free from certain things. So the first cup of wine was the cup that they would drink to remind them that they were set free from slavery. The second cup was to remind them that they were set free from the murders of the firstborn children. And uh, that was really important to remember. The third cup was to remind them of the drowning of the children in the Nile. That's when Moses was saved because his mother and sister put him in the Nile in bulrushes. The fourth cup is to remind the people that uh, they no longer uh, could depend on someone else to get the straw for their bricks and mortar. They had to gather it themselves. The fifth cup was a cup that no one ever drank from, but it was the cup of Elijah because they hoped that at some point during a Passover meal, Elijah the great prophet would come and tell them the Messiah was on the way. Then I feel sure that Jesus added the sixth cup. Jesus took the bread it was unleavened bread. You remember, that's the bread they were using. And Jesus said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Then, again, after supper, 
after the Passover, Jesus gave thanks and said, This is my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. I want you to do this to remember me. So Jesus and the disciples carried this meal out, re remembering the Passover, but Jesus took the Passover meal one step further into what we call the sacrament of Holy Communion, the body and blood of Jesus. And tonight we celebrate that gift to us. Jesus comes to us in the bread and in the wine. We believe that Christ is truly present in, under, and through the bread and the wine. Eternal and ever-living God, you sent your Son Jesus into the world to be an example and to walk with us. Help us, O Lord, to walk in the steps of Jesus. Help us to walk in his humility so that we too may be among our fellow travelers as those who serve. Help us to walk in his forgiveness so that we may forgive as we hope to be forgiven. Help us to walk in his courage, so that nothing may ever deflect us from the way we ought to take. Help us to walk in his endurance, so that nothing may daunt or discourage us 
until we reach our goal. Help us to walk in his loyalty so that nothing may ever seduce our hearts from our devotion to Jesus. Grant unto us to take up whatever cross is laid upon us and gallantly and gladly carry it, knowing that you help us to carry the load. Grant that as we share the cross, we may share his crown. As we share his death, we may also share his life. And so grant that having suffered with him, we may also reign with him. We ask this in the name of Jesus for the sake of love. Amen. Tonight we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us on this Monday, Thursday. Remember, tomorrow we'll be remembering Good Friday, the death of Jesus our Lord. Here at St. Stephen's, our youth are going to be leading us in that service. It's a tenebrae service which means we go from light to darkness, remembering the last words of Jesus. We'll carry out the Paschal candle tomorrow night and we'll be remembering how Jesus died for our sins. Being a part of worship on Good Friday makes the worship service on Easter morning all the more memorable. Please join us. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far away from helping me? From the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you, our ancestors trusted, they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver 
let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a raving and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evil doers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen, you have rescued me. I will tell you, I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him. All of you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction or the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it.